Well, hello, and welcome to A Potted History of Sheds, an exciting new feature where I'm going to talk about my personal car history. Why is it called A Potted History of Sheds? Well, it's supposed to be a play on a brief history of time. So instead of brief, it's potted, and then potting, potting sheds, and sheds, of course, is... um. A disparaging term for cheap cars, of which I've owned a few. I've owned some very, very nice cars as well. But I have owned a lot of sheds, and indeed I do at the moment. So, where shall we start? Well, where better place to begin than at the beginning, as Dylan Thomas said. To begin at the beginning. It is spring, Bible black, etc., etc. So, let's go right back to my very first car. I passed my test, first time, um, half drunk, half hungover. Um, And then we went looking for cars, my father and I, um, the same day, if I recall, because I took my test very early in the morning. It was the first test that morning. And that was after a night of inadvisably heavy drinking. Hence the half drunk, half hungover thing. But I passed, so that's all that counts, isn't it? So yeah, so we went looking for cars and my father bought me my first car. um, Which I think is a good thing for a father to do. I certainly bought bought all of my stepkids their first car. Um, <clears throat> but because he was buying, he he kind of went with his own taste rather than what I wanted. And having looked at a few, I remember we looked at a Renault 16 that was rotten as a pear, being sold by a very aggressive red-haired Irishman. And I remember looking at a Cortina, which would have been Mark IV or a Mark V. But what we actually bought, my loves, or what my father actually bought, was an Austin Ambassador 2-litre HLS. Uh, It was a 1983 car, and I can even tell you the registration number. It was FFD526Y. And it was (laughs) quite funny, considering my fleet now. But it cost £500, I'm sure it did. And it was silver. So, there you go. We've come full circle. I started driving a £500 silver car, and I am now, how many years? 30 odd years later, I'm still driving £500 silver cars. There you go. Um, So what can I remember about this ambassador? I don't have any pictures of it, unfortunately. Um, I'm sure you know what the ambassador is, the Austin ambassador. It was the um, uh, the sort of... uh, new version of the princess uh the main difference being that it was an actual hatchback as opposed to the princess which was, of course was a boot very wedge shaped big old thing big old lump of a thing um with that big old two liter lump in it um it was four speed manual it had electric front windows uh it had an onboard cassette player i remember that and the interior, the plasticky bits were sort of brown, and the velour pleblon, whatever the hell it's called, that was like British rail orange. Um, you wouldn't countenance such a colour scheme in a car now, but in those days it was perfectly normal. Hearing aid beige was a very popular colour for cars. So, anyway, we bought the bloody thing. Um, Where did we buy it from? I think it might have been Kidderminster. Could have been Kidderminster. Somewhere around there, anyway. It was definitely never each Reddit week. It was definitely west of where we lived, and we lived in Redditch at the time. In Worcestershire. Um, Yeah, so... The old man bought it for me, insured it for me, taxed it for me. And that night, uh, I took my girlfriend, Donna, 
uh, to a place called the Crooked House in Dudley, which was a weird pub that was sort of all um, topsy-turvy and upside-downy and all slopey, a bit like the bloody cottage I live in now, really. And then the following day, we went to visit my grandparents at home in South Wales. So that would have been my first time on a motorway, I suppose. I certainly turned down the motorway less than after passing my test. Um, and I remember doing 100 miles an hour down the M50. And I remember stopping at the end of the M50 at Ross on Y so that Donna could be sick. Um, no. Don't know what the problem was. I was driving perfectly, perfectly well. And that's about all I can remember about that car. Second gear synchro had pretty much gone. The second gear was a bastard. Um, and I really can't remember much else about it. Um, I had it for a while. I took a summer job where, what were we supposed to be selling? We were supposed to be selling stationary goods to independent shops or something uh, on a kind of traveling basis. What we were actually doing was selling smuggled lighters um, that came in through Ireland, I think, and didn't have some sort of duty on them that they were supposed to have. <clears throat> and I was doing this job and traveled all over the place, all down the East Coast, all around Scotland. Um, but unbeknownst to me, the boss was the ex-girlfriend of a guy that was doing this properly. And she was using his contacts and ripping off his methods. And not unnaturally, they weren't too pleased about this. So one night at the hotel we were all staying in, all of the cars were smashed up. And that was the end of Arnold the Ambassador. Um, he was well and truly biffed up. And what did I do with it? I'll tell you what I did with him. I swapped him for a Lada Riva estate, a blue one, with a guy called Stuart. I'd completely forgotten about that car, which I then immediately sold. Um, and I can't remember for the life of me what came next. So we're not going to be able to do this in a strict chronological order. So I'll just throw them in as an as and when I remember them from around the same time frame. So there was definitely an FSO 125P. Um, I was running a pub at the time. Um, I think, I think I was the UK's youngest publican. Um, pretty sure I was. And yeah, I bought this bloody FSO 125P. It was a uh, a Polsky Fiat production um, based on a 600-year-old square Fiat. It was basically the same shape as the, the Lada Riva. Um, and I can tell you the number plate of that one as well. It was B352OHP. Um, and I don't remember a huge amount about that, except that me and my mates... Um, got pulled by the police for curb crawling uh, when we were gawping at the hookers on Cheddar Road one night in Birmingham because we were kids and such things held fascinations for us. Now, what other cars were there from around that time? There was... Um, oh, yeah, I was still at the pub and I bought from a local fruit farm a Renault 4 van in light blue um, with the... That was a lovely thing, actually. It was super low mileage. It had only done about 20,000 miles. I wish I had it now. It would be worth a fortune with the dash-mounted gear change and whatnot. And then I, I sold that to my neighbour and took in part exchange a 1.5 five-speed Austin Allegro called Bluebell, 
which was notable for using almost exactly the same amounts of oil and petrol. And what do I remember about that car? I remember going with my friends Sue and Ollie uh, to the American Adventure theme park, which has long gone now. And I remember stopping at a garage on the way back. And the garage had just taken delivery of um, a load of sample bottles of Ballymagowan mineral water. And they were just all shoved in, uh, in a pile in the middle of the garage floor. And I went in to pay for my petrol and oil. And the person behind the counter said, help yourself to mineral water. It's free. So... We took them at their word and we filled the car with as many bottles of this bloody stuff as we could possibly fit in it. And the car was almost certainly dangerously overloaded. Uh, and I sold them in the pub for, I think it was 69 pence each. Did very well out of that. Then at some point there was a Mini that I bought from a guy who had a, a little garage and he kind of did up Minis. And that was quite cool. I blew the engine in that coming back from Wales, doing a silly speed on the motorway. Um, and then, I guess we're getting on to the time when I got my first decent car. And it was a hand-me-down from my mother. My mother had a Citroen BX 1.9 GTI and she replaced that with a 3 litre V6 Citroen XM <coughs> Excuse me, and handed me down the BX and that was a fabulous thing. I had that for a good while and went all over the country in that. It was a supercar. I loved that to bits. Again, it's a car I... I would very much love to own now. And I think that was the car I... No, you know, I must have missed a car out. I've missed a car out. because Before the BX, I had a CX, which was a hand-me-down from my father. And it was a CX 2-litre Athena. I remember that much. That was a supercar. Um, I remember a memorable journey in that. I remember driving that to Glasgow to take part in a television program called, 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 called Catchword. Not catchphrase, catchword. It used to be on at 4 or 4.30 on BBC Two. Um, Scottish TV program hosted by a guy called Paul Coyer. And it was all word-based. Anybody remember it? Do you remember it? Um, and it was uh, it was actually a really good program. And again, I was still in the pub at this point, one of the pubs. I ran four pubs. Um, and you could stay on the program if you won for up to a week. And if you stayed on for the whole week, you won a QBA computer. Computers were in their infancy back then. This would have been in about, what, 1991, I think it was. Um, and I was so cocksure that I was going to win this program that I agreed a deal with one of the customers in the pub who was a computer geek. I knew less than nothing about them. And I agreed a deal to sell the computer to him after I'd won it. And... So, yeah, I drove this Citroen with my girlfriend. Which girlfriend was it? Uh, I think it was still Donna. Still Donna at that point. Um, and, yeah, we went up to Glasgow and we stayed at the Glasgow Holiday Inn, courtesy of the production company, which was very nice. And that was the first time. The first night we stayed there was the first time I met Chris Eubank. Uh, we were sitting at the bar having a drink. It was either, I think it was just after the first day's filming. And we're sitting at the bar and this guy walks past. And I should have, I'm a huge boxing fan and always have been. 
And a guy walked past, and I said to Donna, I said, uh, I swear that was Chris Eubank. And um, she sort of didn't know who he was. But the barman was listening and said, um, in a strong Scottish accent, uh, shall I do a Scottish accent? Might be offensive. He said, oh, that's Chris. Yeah, you should say hello to him. He's a nice guy. So after a little while, he sort of wandered back, and um, I'd had a bit of Dutch courage. So I said, um, hi, Chris. Not Mr. Eubank. I definitely called, I definitely said, hi, Chris. And entirely unexpectedly, he stopped and said hello and kind of came to join us and had a chat and bought us drinks. Uh, he was just the nicest guy in the world. And bear in mind that he would have been, oh, would he have been world champion at that time in, in 91? Or would he have been coming up or would he have been on his way back down? I, I honestly can't remember, but he was a big name. And I remember being very impressed that, you know, a, a kind of celeb would take the time to just stop and chill out with us like that. Um, so anyway, um, I stayed on the program for a week. It wasn't actually a week, because I think we filmed three episodes per evening. Um, and won the computer, sold the computer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all of that was in this Citroen CX. It was a fabulous car. Kind of started my love affairs with Citroens. And I'll give you, um, I'll give you a spoiler of... Um, of cars to come. I've owned a lot of Citroëns. Um, I've owned the CX, BX, numerous XMs. I owned an SM. Um, I owned a Traction Avant. Uh, I've owned a DS. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, Xantias. Um, Oh, okay. Oh, um, uh, an AX. I had a little diesel AX. I took that to Paris. God, I took that to Paris with, oh, it was when I was courting the lady that became my first wife. Um, that was fabulous. What a cracking little car. That was my grandfather's car. <clears throat> and I inherited that when he gave up driving. <clears throat> little 1.5 diesel chap. Absolutely fabulous. Anyway, let's try and get back on track, shall we? So, uh, we've done the Citroen CX. Then, as I mentioned, I had the BX GTI from my mum. That was super. And I definitely owned the BX when I joined the motor trade. That much I do know. Yeah, that was definitely my car when I went into the motor trade. Um, and I've got no idea then what car would have come next because this is where things all get a bit mixed up. I was working at a classic car showrooms and auction house in the West Midlands. Um, and as a result of that, I kind of drove well, I was driving different cars every day, obviously, and some of them were personally owned, some of them were like company cars or just cars nicked off the pitch. Um, I can't remember my first personal car after the BX. Um, I think I probably didn't have many personal cars for a while, just cars that I bought and sold and cars that I nicked off the pitch because I wanted to be flash. Um, I remember a black silver shadow that I drove a lot and I remember taking a few girls on dates in that one um, there was what was her name oh there was Natasha I remember her um, there was Oh, God, there was a fabulous nurse from Hales Owen Way. I remember taking her in this roly-poly to, um, what was his name? It was the Post-Olympic Do. 
which I must have jumped forward a few years. Which Olympics would it have been? Um, would it have been when were the Olympics? Must have been the '96 Olympics then, I suppose. And Nick Skelton lived not too far away, the other side of Henley and Arden. And he threw this massive post-Olympic party, um, charity raising thing. Uh, and I blagged tickets to it. And I took this fabulous nurse from Hales Owen. God, she was absolutely stunning. And that was a, that was a really good night. I think that's probably about enough for tonight. Um, to be continued. <laughs>